this is Eugene Rudinsky, who is Solutions Architect at Cloudberry, and uh, Serge Zak joining me today as a partner manager. And uh, we are going to talk about Microsoft Azure as a major bullet for your backup strategy and disaster recovery strategy. So basically, we're going to talk about Cloudberry Lab and tools that we developed today specifically for uh, Microsoft Azure and uh, what kind of features you can see today and uh, what we plan to, um, to have in future. Uh, just quickly, uh, to make sure that you can hear me, uh, there is a virtual hand. Please raise that virtual hand if you can hear me. Okay, perfect. Thanks very much. Um, so basically, before we begin, uh, before we start talking about, um, you know, Microsoft Azure, uh, Cloudberry features, tools, um, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, let me just put here a couple of uh, administrative things. So first of all, uh, we're planning to we're actually recording this webinar, um, so we're gonna you know, send out the direct link to your uh, inbox so you will be able to download it and uh, review that uh, webinar once again just to make sure that you uh, don't uh, miss anything. Um, if you have any questions, um, if you have any questions or if you have any comments or you want to share your, um, you know, your feelings or you want to share with us something else, so please feel free to use uh, Q&A box. Uh, so basically, it's marked uh, questions, so please use that questions uh, section and uh, send us your uh, questions and feelings, etc. And uh, we will try to cover uh, them during uh, this demonstration. Also, uh, there is a good news, uh, so we're going to have, we actually have uh, free Cloudberry Pro licenses today. And we're going to give away those licenses to the most interesting question. Uh, so that's the first uh, nominee. And the other one is going to go to the most active participant. So uh, please stay with us. Stay until the end. Uh, be active. You know, send your questions, send your uh, feedbacks, and uh, we will be happy to share uh, these free licenses with you. OK, uh, let's move on. Uh, so a couple of words on uh, on, on Cloudberry uh, lab products. So uh, we are here since 2008, and uh, you know we started the uh, development from Cloudberry Lab Explorer, which were initially designed for uh, you know for managing your uh, for, for for which was initially designed for managing cloud object storage. So basically, uh, the first product was designed for AWS S3 platform. So basically, it's a uh, file inter exchange, uh, the way to, you know, to upload files, the way to download files, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was one of the first products. Uh, right now, um, we have really, you know, a huge uh, portfolio that contains different tools. So we have backup tool, which is, uh, you know, something that we're going to talk about today, and uh, you know, it's the way to protect your computers. Is the way to um, you know to set the strategy for you know recovering that computers you know for keeping them somewhere else and this is something that we are planning to discuss today. Uh, we also have really uh, nice utilities like um, Drive. So uh, we will be talking about Drive as well. So Drive is actually designed to uh, to mount your uh, object storage to your computer. And actually, you can get extended um, disk, uh, which is attached, which is actually mapped right to your computer, and you can use it as a uh, as a storage. So we will be talking about this uh, today. Uh, what else? Um, so um, I actually have few polls uh, today for you, just to uh, quickly, just to understand, you know, where we are and uh, how exactly you use your uh, Microsoft Azure today. So uh, please help me to do that. Uh, so the, very, the, the very first poll is going to be how to use, how do you use your Microsoft Azure today? So I'm going to launch the poll. There we go. 
So please use your uh, use your toolbar to uh, reply uh, to reply. So just to understand how to use it exactly. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, so thank you very much. That's really helpful. Um, so just quickly, another question. Really, you know, quick one. Do you use uh, Cloudberry? So the last reply uh, is quite, you know, it's quite funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. So thank you very much. And uh, one more question, if you don't mind, just to understand uh, what kind of content you want to see today. So it's actually uh, going to be a question on the um, way you consider to use Microsoft Azure uh, and. Uh, you know, the way um, of functionality you're looking at uh, Microsoft Azure and maybe third-party tools like Library. So I'm going to launch the poll right now. Okay, so the question is, uh, do you consider Microsoft Azure as disaster recovery backup destination? Okay, perfect. Amazing. Yeah, so thank you very much for, you know, I can see everyone is actually uh, voting. Um, I can see a few votes are still coming. Okay. That's uh, amazing. So thank you very much. Now it's clear. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, CloudBee tools and uh, what we have available today for Microsoft Azure. Um, so before, actually, before we go into um, all these, uh, you know, details, uh, let me just uh, quickly highlight a very important thing. So uh, Cloudberry has two concepts. So we actually have uh, a solution as a service, let's put it this way. So it's actually uh, MBS or Managed Backup Service, uh, which is an online service where you can actually uh, sign in create your account, uh, create your administrator account, and uh, manage your products in the uh, web service. So we're going to cover it today uh, in, in demonstration and also in the overall concept. And the other concept is actually standalone. And it's, uh, it's since the very beginning, it's just a uh, product that you can obtain from website, uh, install it to your computer, uh, configure accordingly, and uh, that's it. So you're done. So actually, you can start to manage your uh, files across object storages, or you can start to back up your uh, computers or your files, depends on your uh, requirements and depends on your uh, needs. So two concepts, uh, two concepts keep in mind. So MBS, which is online service, where you actually keep everything uh, in a, uh, you know, uh, in online uh, location, and you'll get more details about that. And the other one is uh, standalone, is the way you obtain the product and uh, you work with that product um, in your uh, computer. So uh, the very first thing that I want to highlight is the object storage and uh, the object storage explorer. Uh, so as you uh, know, uh, there are different things available uh, in Microsoft Azure uh, from the storage standpoint of view. So today, what we can offer uh, is the support for Microsoft Blob and for for Microsoft Azure uh, Blob storage. So we can offer uh, support for hot and cold. So these are two storages that you can actually see today in uh, Microsoft Object Storage technology. So the cold storage is quite new, and it offers you, you know, uh, the you know cheapest way to keep your uh, data, and uh, it's it's like designed for uh, data that are uh, not frequently accessed. So if you want to uh, get something like archiving, so the cold storage is actually uh, the way to go. Uh, you can also uh, see file, uh, Azure file, so that's kind of uh, uh, 
uh, storage that you may want to use as a uh, file share. Um, so we also uh, provide support for the Azure uh, file storage. And uh, Microsoft OneDrive is actually uh, not really part of the uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, rather than you know kind of uh, independent Microsoft uh, consumer uh, solution. So uh, OneDrive is also uh, kind of thing that you may consider to use uh, as a um, uh, cloud storage in your uh, strategies, in your needs, uh, and uh, in your computers. So there are a few things available in uh, object storage today. I think it's a really good uh, idea to quickly jump into uh, Cloud Explorer uh, for Azure Blob Storage. So that's the actually pro version. And um, so I just want to highlight something. So it's uh, 2.5, so please do not mix it with uh, the other um, Explorer that we have available for uh, AWS S3. You know, I see customers sometimes downloading that product uh, for using uh, in Azure, but uh, they don't really see uh, all these available storages and the uh, accounts. So basically, uh, this one is uh, something that we suggest to use for, we actually have, which is designed for Microsoft Azure. Um, so yeah, it's quite simple. Uh, it's designed to uh, manage files across the uh, containers. So you can see all your objects here. You can see those sizes. Those sizes. Um, you can play with uh, different settings. You can play with, uh, you know, the direct link to the, this object. You can copy it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we're going to keep that uh, Cloud Bear Explorer for uh, Azure for now, because uh, we will need to see the structure of the backup files later on. Okay, let's move on. Um, so I also mentioned that there is another one, which is uh, there is another product uh, which is designed for making your uh, storage part of your computer. So I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about uh, Cloud View Lab Drive as the tool to is the tool which is designed to um, just. So um, um, there is a way to map, you know, sorry about that, um, to my colleague just told me that there was a poll uh, stuck on the screen. So I just want to repeat the uh, final, so the last slide. So the last slide was addressed to uh, CloudBerry Drive, which is actually the way to map your uh, object storage to your computer. So it's 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 really good way. It's really a uh, nice way to extend the um, you know the capacity of your computer by attaching uh, your you know your block capacity to that computer. And I think it's a really good time to jump quickly to the demonstration of that particular product. So uh, we, we recently had the product installed. So there is a uh, you know a nice icon in a tray. So if you go to options. So that's just really, really quick uh, setup, configuration of that uh, product. So uh, what we have here, so we have actually, um, you know, different storage accounts added recently. And uh, it's quite simple to configure. So what we need to know is just the count and the shared key. So we also can test the configuration. And, um, you know, it actually tells us that um, this storage is available for uh, through the configuration. And finally, we can talk with, uh, we can actually map that uh, storage account to a certain drive. So it can be G or A drive, whatever you want. And uh, so that's the way we work with uh, remote storage. So let's just take a look at the, at the E drive, which is uh, part of my, which is part of my remote Azure container. So we have something right there. This is actually uh, a, backup uh, a, a backup structure. So we will jump here later on. So um, yeah, let's move on and um, let's talk about the 
backup. So I think uh, the most important here, uh, and uh, yeah, based on the results of the polls, uh, so that's actually. So yeah, I can see there are a few questions in in the Q and A box. I will you know make a break a little bit later before we dive into uh, a demonstration of products. So um, let me talk about the uh, you know flagship product from from Cloudbury. So the the flagship product is um, is, is backup software, uh, and it's quite obvious because uh, everybody wants to make sure that their data uh, is protected. Everybody wants to uh, you know to keep a second copy of their data, or you know, keep keep you know a couple of copies off site, uh, or if there is a mission critical application or service, you know, we plan to uh, we plan disaster recovery site when we can fail over to that disaster recovery site and you know run our services from there, and uh, that's the way uh, where we have um, uh, Cloudberry backup for uh, different platforms. So today we have uh, Cloudberry backup for uh, Microsoft Windows. Uh, there is also um, a Linux and Mac support. So we'll be talking about those platforms a bit later. Uh, but let me highlight quickly uh, what kind of benefits we have today. So the major, uh, the, the really important thing is that we have image-based backup, or it's also known as bare metal backup, uh, which is designed to uh, to back the entire computer. And uh, this is something that Cloudberry uh, developed since, since the very beginning. I think it's roughly uh, seven years for now of that development. So we do provide support for a really wide list of supported of operating systems starting uh, 2003, to some, starting 2003, Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh, there is 2012, Y2, 2012, etc. So all these major operating systems that are widely used, used today are supported by um, uh, backup for Windows platform, and especially by image-based backup. Um, so um, what we have since latest release is, you know, a couple of really nice options. Um, so one of my favorite one is to uh, the way to exclude uh, files and folders uh, from my volume. So for example, I have a C drive included into my backup, and I don't really want to backup, well, you know, some user data just because you know those user data contain um, some really random information, and uh, it's kind of uh, you know has different strategy for uh, for protection, or you know these data is possible to reproduce easily. So uh, you know the exclusions for image-based backup is designed just for cases like that. Um, so um, you know the block-level backup, uh, which is available since uh, one of the you know one of the uh, latest release. So it's actually designed to uh, keep an eye on the changes within uh, my disk's configuration, and uh, it's actually the way to uh, reduce the amount of uh, you know data that I allocate in my um, storage. And uh, block level backup is the way to actually to you know to accomplish incremental backup for uh, my uh, computer. So for example, if I do initial backup, so it actually goes as a uh, as a full as a full point. And uh, then, when I work with uh, block level backup, I get actually only changes, uh, you know, offloaded on my uh, destination on my Azure uh, blob storage. Uh, so there is native VSS support. So don't worry about your, um, you know, services, or don't worry about your locked files or open files within that computer. So we uh, carefully use that VSS integration, which is uh, really part of. Uh, Microsoft's actually uh, Windows Shared Copy Service. What we do, we uh, simply create a snapshot for a certain volume, and that's it. So after that, we uh, work with a uh, consistent data, which allows us to, uh, you know, to uh, deal without any problems with all these logs file, log files, or with all these, um, you know, uh, running services, so on and so forth. Um, so there is also uh, my favorite one, uh, which is network shares. Um, so network shares is, uh, you know, really often a service that you may want or you may run in your uh, in in your uh, computer network. And uh, you know, uh, backup for um, Cloudberry backup allows to mount or QNC paths to your computer and include them as the part of the 
uh, overall backup strategy. So it's quite cool. And uh, yeah, just part of the product and you can uh, work with uh, Network Share 7 today. Um, so just because we have image-based backup available today for Windows, unfortunately, it's not it's not available for Mac and for Linux computer. We have uh, lots of requests uh, coming about that, and uh, I believe that we will uh, start to consider um, we will start to consider working on um, you know volumes and uh, image-based backups for those platforms. Uh, but uh, just because we have image base for Windows available today, uh, we actually can uh, work. Um, you know, with different options from the restore perspective. And uh, one of the way uh, today, well, the initial option was uh, designed for AWS. So we are, you know, like a couple of years, a couple of months ago, uh, we made it possible. So customers uh, were able to work with uh, EC2 instance. So basically they were able to restore uh, their image-based backups to uh, as EC2 instance. And uh, as we as we actually uh, started to get similar requests uh, from Microsoft customers, so we decided to add that functionality for Microsoft Azure. So today uh, we actually have this option available for Microsoft Azure, and uh, you are lucky today just because we have uh, you actually have opportunity to see something which we are working at, um, on right now. So that's going to be a much faster restore. And uh, I've checked. Well, I actually tested a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of configurations uh, before uh, this webinar. I can promise you uh, roughly 15-20 uh, minutes recovery time objective of the entire service, uh, just because the architecture uh, will, you know, will, will allow us to do and to work in that way. And uh, I'll explain you why. So basically, your recovery time objective for the entire service with Microsoft Azure can be 15 20 minutes and you you learn in in few in few minutes why and uh, you know what kind of options we offer today um, so there are also uh, really you know standard way to work with uh, you know USB disks but uh, well it depends uh, on the way you want to work in it so for example if you want to um, work with uh, ISO it's like um, image uh, ISO or image of your computer, so you can do that, and uh, I believe you can do that even even if even in uh, Microsoft Azure by placing your ISO into uh, one of the bucket and mounting that ISO as a um, you know uh, CD-ROM, and then uh, launching your operating system or not not operating system, but uh, the boot process from there. Let's move on. Um, I think uh, before we do that, uh, let's just quickly, really quickly, jump and see uh, what options we have available uh, from the backup perspective. So that's actually my Windows Server 2012 Part 2. So uh, what we have, we have uh, Ultimate Edition, which is uh, you know the most suggested, uh, the most suggested uh, configuration, the most suggested. Uh, product so basically it contains everything which is available today and really quickly um, yeah by the way it's a um, uh, standalone edition so uh, the product that you obtain from website and you configure it without any uh, central console without any single pane of glass so it's actually um, a standalone product you work right in a product so we have two we have two Azure accounts uh, so that's kind of First step, what we need to do is configuration of the Azure account where we want to back up our data. Um, yeah, super simple. Uh, the same way like we deal with uh, Explorer or with uh, Drive. So you've, you've seen two of these products before. Um, so we just define uh, the account, the shared key, the account type. So it actually can be uh, some, something from that list and uh, the container. So uh, for Azure, this is container. Okay, uh, so that's it from the configuration standpoint, I mean from the uh, backup configuration, from the backup destination configuration standpoint of view. So uh, the next thing is uh, the configuration of agent and uh, configuration of the plan. So within Cloudberry, uh, we call plan. So plan is a concept uh, that protects your computer and that protection can be either volume level backup when you back up all your you know computer volumes or you back up your 
where you back up your files or you back up your application depends on what exactly you want to protect. So we actually have a lot of features right here. So this one, um, as you can see, it's like is actually the same icon. It's like image-based backup. So it's actually a computer backup, the entire computer backup. And uh, this is half of the strategy where we actually define the backup strategy. We define what should be backed up. So we work with that computer. So this computer contains SQL database and I want to back up the entire computer, not just an SQL data, the entire computer which contains also my SQL data, my SQL service and everything which is related to, uh, to, to those things. So let's go ahead. Um, so the second step is super simple, which is define where the data should go. Uh, the reason I'm working here, uh, so it actually can be, you know, it actually can be offloaded anywhere, anywhere to the storage. So just to remind you, uh, we are really uh, storage agnostic. Uh, so we do this webinar uh, for Microsoft customers just to let them know what kind of benefit we have today. However, we are really storage agnostic. We are really uh, provider agnostic. So it's up to you what to select. So uh, select and go whatever for uh, what you prefer from the budget standpoint of view, or what you prefer from the configuration standpoint of view, or simplicity. It's up to you what to use. However, uh, just to accomplish that 15 minutes recovery time objective, I want to use uh, Microsoft Azure, and that's going to be a blob storage within the region where I plan to rise my virtual machines in case of disaster recovery. So uh, let's just select that Microsoft Azure. Um, so that's the plan. Uh, we also can work with a system state uh, where we can back up only uh, Windows system state instead of image-based backup. So basically, if we you know, do image-based backup, we don't really need system state just because image-based backup contains system state. Um, so I want to work with a uh, image-based backup just because I want to restore that computer uh, into my Azure account. So I have two uh, drives here. I actually have two partitions. I don't really want to uh, back up you know, others because they are data. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the way to deal with exclusions, by the way. So you actually can tell uh, what should be excluded. And remember I told you that uh, if there is a case when user has really unnecessary data or this data can be reproduced easily, so uh, you know, there is an option to exclude that data from image-based backup. So rest of other options I don't really want to go through. Um, so there is compression, configura uh, compression configuration, encryption. Uh, so basically uh, you can encrypt at rest. You can uh, prepare your backups before you send to, uh, to Azure. And uh, there are different options available uh, from the encryption standpoint of view. Um, so there is retention policy. Uh, so that's quite important uh, where you can say um, how frequently uh, you know how often and uh, what's the frequency for your backup so you can actually set it here. Um, so there is also a way to define the uh, you know plan scheduler so basically you can say uh, when this should happen exactly there is also full backup and etc uh, etc et so there are many other things uh, so they are here to make your uh, backup strategy more uh, smooth and uh, you know it's it's just here uh, to you know to have your backup strategy more relevant and uh, to keep it what exactly you want. So um, that's my backup plan again. So the backup plan means that uh, it's the configuration of my um, plan which is uh, here, and I just uh, you know run it and I get my uh, data offloaded to the uh, to the storage. So we actually run that recently, and as you see, there is a green uh, green mark means that uh, that was uh, done successfully. You know, obviously this is cloud buried, and uh, <laughs> there, there is no magic. So we do that image based image based backup quite uh, quite cool and quite nice, just because we do that um, for the last seven or yeah six or seven years since the very beginning. And if we can go here, uh, so we actually can see uh, in a uh, in a storage one of my points. So that's actually my point and it's uh, available. So backup storage, I can actually see my um, my date available here for the restore. And uh, also, uh, what I really wanted to show you is the way we keep the structure in the storage. 
So again, uh, thanks for the drive. So that's actually my uh, uh, Cloudberry Explorer drive, uh, sorry, Cloudberry drive, and it's designed to map my container from Azure to my uh, computer. So I can see my E drive, so I can see my I drive, and it is mapped to one of my Azure container, and at the same time, I have my image by backup in, in the container. So the structure is quite simple. Uh, so the CBB underscore uh, SQL, so that's actually uh, NetBuyer's name of my computer. CBB means uh, Cloudberry Backup, so that's kind of abbreviation. There is underscore uh, between those two. And if you go inside, uh, so the configuration inside is quite simple. So we keep the configuration of the uh, agent itself and also the configuration of the uh, plan. So it's right here. Um, and it's quite cool. Uh, we also keep the timestamps of that configuration just in case if you make any changes to that configuration file, we actually uh, back it up as well. And uh, finally, the CBB disks. So they are, their structure is quite simple. So uh, in, 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 the, in the, you know, there is a volume and uh, the volume contains the, um, the timestamp. Basically, that's the timestamp. That, that, that is my revision. Um, and it represents the state of my computer uh, for the current, for for the for the selected uh, time, for the selected period of time. Uh, so this is maybe not really uh, interesting from the structure perspective um, and uh, from what we do inside. But uh, I know that you know people asking about what's the way you know you have any storage, how exactly you keep that data in a storage, and uh, what's the structure. So there we go. It's uh, quite simple and uh, it's really accurate from my perspective. So that's it. So we've got that uh, backup uh, set in a, uh, in, a, in a storage. So what we can do right now, we can actually work uh, with uh, this particular, with this particular uh, image-based backup. So we have recently created one restore plan and it's right here. So let's take a look at the options available. So I'm not going to stack in that wizard really. I just want to show you uh, what we have today available. So um, again, we selected Microsoft Azure as a uh, storage for my data. And uh, we want to restart that uh, plan once, uh, or we can save it as a restore plan for uh, the next use. So uh, this is quite cool, because what we can do, we can actually automate that process. So for example, you know, you have a strategy, you have a disaster recovery strategy, and you want to uh, make sure that in case of some, you know, accident within your network or within your application stack, what you can do, you actually launch your disaster recovery strategy. And uh, while I'm talking about this, uh, so this is actually the plan name. So uh, let me just show you quickly. So if we go to, where we go? Uh, so we actually can do this one. So the CBB, uh, sorry, uh, CBB, we actually can do the following. So we actually go to, to the Cloud Baby Lab, and then uh, we go to Cloud Baby Backup. There we go. So if you launch the CBB, uh, that's my, well, I like really <laughs> scripting and, uh, you know, automating, orchestrating. So that's the common line. And that's, uh, we actually see it, it is used widely by our customers and prospects, and they like it. So what we can do here, CBB minus R, so that actually means that I want to, well, actually, CBB plan, uh, and then the plan name, restore to restore, restore, restore to Azure. So for instance, we have this plan, and that's the plan name, and the minus R. So that command line uh, is going to execute my uh, plan right here. And uh, the reason I'm talking about that is actually you can create your plans. You don't really need to schedule them. You don't need, really need to set them to a you know, particular time. Uh, but you can just create them. And uh, you can use some kind of trigger uh, to execute that plan. So for example, you have some kind of monitoring tool which, is keep, you know, which keeps an eye on one of your uh, mission critical service. And uh, if there is some, something wrong to that mission critical server, you can simply trigger that script and that script can, you know, execute the restart process. So that's it. So that's the, uh, that's the entire idea uh, to save and to give that one name to, uh, to, to that restart, to that restart plan. Um, so the major, you know, there are a few major steps are here. So you can restart uh, as Azure uh, 
virtual machine or Azure uh, data disk. So basically, it's going to give you uh, data disk. It's going to give you VHD file in uh, Azure uh, network in Azure block, which you can further attach to your virtual machine in Azure and uh, work with that disk as a you know uh, data uh, for your computer as a data for your uh, uh, for your um, uh, cloud service. So I just want to go with uh, the virtual machine option. So uh, I take a look at this. So these are so these are uh, it's actually really detailed, really detailed. Um, you know, step in a visa where you can say, uh, yeah. So the, the very first thing is actually uh, we need to define the account. Is actually the account where you type the email address and the password. And that's it. So we actually um, get access to your subscription, and uh, then you can work with uh, all these details. Like you can define computer name, which you're going to see uh, later on in your Azure portal. You can define the location. You can define the resource group, uh, virtual machine size. So uh, we actually fetch this information right from Azure, and you can uh, restore. And you can actually restore your computer, your image-based backup to a specific. Uh, to a specific um, plan. So keep an eye on that. Uh, each plan uh, has its own pricing. So uh, basic A0, that's the cheapest one. I don't remember exactly uh, the price in dollars, but uh, that's the cheapest one. And uh, you can even more, you can actually work with uh, highest plans here. So but network, uh, subnet, uh, so these are quite important uh, when you re when you restore your service. So you actually place uh, this virtual machine to that network, and uh, yeah, we just fetch this information, and we just you know give you to select uh, that network and that subnet uh, to work with. So the storage, uh, the bucket where we want to place the uh, VHD files, and the uh, boot diagnostic information. Uh, so remember that BMP file which shows the state of your computer, uh, of your, uh, of your, you know, computer, current state of your screen uh, right now. Um, so this step, you actually lucky. Uh, as I told you, uh, you're going to see something which is, uh, you know, still here and um, you, you don't see that uh, right now available. Uh, but right now, uh, all we can do, now we actually work in this way. So, for example, if you work with an agent, uh, Cloudberry agent that, sh that sits on your computer, and uh, when you initiate restore uh, from that computer and you keep your data in uh, Azure blob storage and you want to restore that uh, virtual machine to Azure uh, Cloud, so Azure virtual machine destination. So that's going to be uh, cumbersome because, well, it's not going to be cumbersome. It's going to be just really long, and you're not going to get uh, 15 minutes or two, uh, as I promised you. So the way to go is then, for instance, uh, so we initially uh, invented um, restart to EC2 over T2 micro. Uh, so that was really cool feature, which is uh, kind of trigger or kind of uh, proxy uh, element within. Uh, AWS EC2 cloud when you can actually uh, proxy your data from S3 storage through that uh, T2 micro and then instantiate a new virtual machine and everything uh, sits right there in the cloud. So the same idea we have for Azure. Uh, so basically uh, we launch the temporary instance right in Azure and uh, you're going to define that information on the next step. So uh, the, the, the more resources you allocate for the temporary instance, uh, the faster you get uh, that restore process, and it's quite cool. Um, so uh, this is one of the steps, uh, and, and you don't see that step right now in the product because it's uh, something that we are planning to release uh, in the near future. But uh, it's, it's actually the way uh, that you can consider to use uh, your overall just recovery strategy and a quick restart. So basically, in this way, we've checked recently, um, as you can see, it's like 14 minutes, uh, 18 seconds. So that was a configuration uh, of the restart of my computer uh, with uh, 126 gigs of space. So that's actually the initial uh, hard drive, but 20 uh, gigs of space is allocated. 
and uh, everything were kept in uh, Microsoft Azure in hot storage, not in cold storage, in hot storage. Um, I'll probably need to check with the cold storage and uh, see what kind of recovery time objective we can get there. Uh, but anyway, uh, 15 minutes is something that we can get with uh, both sizes. And uh, if we just jump to the uh, to the to the actually yeah, if we, if we actually well that that virtual machine that we actually run in Azure and it's right there, and uh, we can just get this information. It's like 15, 15 minutes in total. So I hope you like it. Uh, from the recovery time objective standpoint of view, uh, just really quickly, I want to uh, introduce my colleague uh, who wants to talk about the uh, things that are available uh, today for for uh, for online services, so uh, Office 365 and uh, you know Google applications. Uh, so meet search Sergey. Uh, he's going to talk about the uh, these functionalities and what we have today. Hey everyone, my name is Sergey. Today I'm going to tell you a few words about our cloud backup solution for Office 365 and Google Apps. By using it you can create your management backup service and provide the service to your customers or use it to backup your own company. The backup is incremental, so it means the store of files that have changed or files created since the last backup. The backup automatically runs twice a day or you can perform it on demand. Uh, your data is encrypted with 256-bit uh, 250, uh, advanced encryption standard and each user gets a unique key. Our solution is light and handy both for administrators and uh, for end users. You can easily set up a simple backup for your customers. There are three main steps to get started. To begin, just add a storage account to save customer backups. Currently we work with uh, three storage providers, Amazon S3, uh, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Once you set your storage, then you can create a unique link uh, for your customers to access uh, the backup service. And finally, just add customer domains or users which you would like to backup. Of course, you can either operate your customers' backups on your own or let your customers control their backups with centralized user management console. For Office 365, we backup mail, people, OneDrive, calendar, and SharePoint. Uh, for Google Apps, we backup the same services. The only difference is that in Google, we don't yet backup sites. Uh, the regular price is uh, $20 per user per year, but of course, we can give you a volume discount. Uh, please don't hesitate to sign up and test our solution. We will give you a two-week free trial. If you have additional questions, just write us and we will be happy to help you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Serge. Um, so that was really uh, nice. It's actually, uh, functionality which is available in uh, our MBS portal. And I can see a few questions in Q&A. It's actually in, 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 Q, in questions, uh, in, in questions uh, box about MBS. So I think it's a good time to jump and show a little bit about, talk about MBS. So what is MBS? So MBS is actually a managed backup service. It's the online service where you keep everything except your data, except your backups. Uh, so MBS is designed to um, to keep your to keep your remote management in single place. So basically, MBS is your uh, single plane of glass. Um, so one of the first thing that you may want to do in MBS, uh, of course, after sign up, is to add your destination. And uh, your destination is, sorry, your at your account or at your storage account. And uh, in that case, it's going to be your Microsoft Azure or any other storage from that place. Again, uh, as I mentioned already, uh, we don't really 
force you to use a certain storage. It's up to you what storage you want to use. It's um, up to you. It depends on your, um, you know, your strategy. It depends on your uh, thoughts on the storage. It depends on your budget, etc. So Microsoft Azure is here. Uh, so once you add the Microsoft Azure uh, as a storage into your uh, storage list, uh, so the second step, you work with users. So user is uh, the entity uh, within MBS which is designed to, um, you know, to be linked to a certain computer. So for example, you have a computer, uh, you have Windows computer, and you, uh, you know, you want to back up that computer, uh, you want to back up image of that computer, and you want to do that, you know, remotely. You want to manage that backup remotely from single plane, from single uh, plane of glass, from single console. So you create a user, and uh, so basically, user is just a pair of uh, email and password. So that's it. And uh, then you download the software. So the software can be anything from that list. So we support Windows platform. I also briefly mentioned that we do support Mac, Linux. So these are two platforms that we introduced recently, uh, but they're getting really good interest right now. So we have uh, requests and people are interested in those functionalities. Um, so there is also uh, NAS, is a Synology or QNAP, so these platforms are here. So you obtain the, uh, you know, the code, you obtain the installer, so you obtain the agent and you put it to the computer uh, that you plan to back up. And then you use username and password, which you created recently in, uh, in, in, in MBS. And uh, you actually, you know, link uh, that computer backup uh, to, uh, to the uh, remote management. So let's just take a look at this. Okay, um, so we have two computers. So one is actually Mac, which is uh, right, right, right. This computer, you actually can see. So that's the mm, that's the client. Um, super simple. So I have a couple of um, accounts nailed. So storage accounts nailed to link to my uh, agent. I can create uh, different configurations, backup configurations here by uh, pointing them to Microsoft Azure. Uh, and by selecting, you know, certain data, like if I want to back up the entire routes, no problem, I can do that, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So all these steps are really uh, the same like we can see today in uh, Microsoft Windows, and actually you've seen that today. Um, and the restore, yeah, so obviously as we can back up, we, <laughs> we can restore. So there is a separate plan, you create a separate restore plan, and you just say uh, what should we restore from that computer. So uh, the interesting thing here is that I can show my plans and I can work with uh, all the plan concepts from, you know, remote console right here. So I can create backup plans, I can create restore plans, and I can see everything here right in the interface. So let's create a backup plan quickly. I'm not going to do that right now, I'm just going to show you what benefits you can hear, you can get here. So I'm, I'm just working with Azure, I can see my Mac local computer so that's my actual structure, so I can actually see my systems users, and uh, that's my structure, and I can select, I can say, all right, I want to back up the entire uh, Eugene folder. So that's it, I'm going to save it. Um, so there we go. Oh, it's going to be <laughs> in, my, um, in my agent right now, so that's it. And if I go back, uh, I can see that plan. So it's created, but uh, never run. So it's my Azure, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's for that, for that source, and it goes to my Microsoft Azure. And the same way if I delete it, um, so if I go here, and if I refresh it, yeah, even more, I don't need to refresh it. So basically, that's the MBS. Uh, it's the way to, to manage your, uh, your agents across infrastructure. And it's really, you know, nice functionality just because it's designed for unlimited scalability. So if you have 1,000 computers, if you have 100 computers, 10 computers, whatever, so you just sign up to MBS and uh, you're good to go. So basically, you create users, you link those users to different agents, and you manage them remotely. And you manage your uh, storage accounts also centrally in MBS platform. 
So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump quickly to the last slide, uh, and at the same time, I want to check questions and uh, you know pick up most interesting questions here, reply lot questions, and uh, we're done for today. Okay. Hello, this is uh, Sergey, and uh, we have a question about uh, from uh, okay, about Office 365 Google Backup Restore. Uh, do you want the restore backup in its original place, or uh, do you um, place the restore in a new file folder? Uh, actually, in uh, Google Apps, uh, we restore in uh, the original folders. We can restore in original folders, and uh, we restore in uh, we can install original folders, original messages, or uh, if it's, uh, we speak up, uh, about uh, uh, a, a single message, uh, we restore a single message uh, to a restore folder. Uh, regarding Office 365, uh, 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 we restore uh, particular folders and uh, we can't restore uh, the whole structure of 365. We can restore particular folders, and uh, if you speak about uh, particular messages, uh, we restore them into a restore folder. So we still have questions coming in, and we are going to, um, you know, to pick them randomly. I'm just trying to to get the most interesting questions here. So there is a question, uh, the limit are 200 gigabytes. No, it's not. Um, so here at Cloudberry, a couple of months ago, we developed a way to, uh, you know, to actually to avoid that limitation. So what we do, uh, we keep your, you know, a data, a, a huge piece of data that uh, we apply to the blob storage into a uh, point, so each point is actually less than 200 megabytes, and uh, this allows us to um, to avoid that limitation. So you just need to give it a try, and you'll get it. So, um, so there is a question for guide for Ubuntu 14. 16. I think it's on a website, um, so for those questions that are not replied in the webinar, we will send direct email. But there is a um, Linux CLI available just in case if you're asking about the uh, Linux with no UI. Okay, so there is a request to get a possibility to select the availability group. Thanks very much for the input. We will add this to a future tracker. Not sure about the question. Uh, can we run the tool to back up SQL workloads? Uh, so we actually have an agent, and uh, this agent should be set to uh, a Microsoft computer. So Microsoft Windows computer is just like a regular software, a regular application. 
and uh, for that application we do have uh, for for such SQL we do have uh, such feature. So uh, let me just show you quickly. So if we go here, if we go here, so um, that's my SQL server. So I can select the instance and I can select the authentication. So that's it. Uh, the next step I'll work with uh, my databases and uh, this will allow me to get those databases uh, backed up. Um, just a couple of words on the way we back up SQL. So um, CloudBerry is kind of wrapper. So we mm, use Microsoft uh, SQL agents, so basically recovery model uh, from Microsoft SQL. And uh, at the end of the day, you're going to have uh, .bik files. Um, so those files will contain um, data and transaction logs of your SQL data, of your SQL database. So we have also, um, you know, different retention policies and different backup methods. Like it can be uh, differential, can be transaction logs backup, or it can be full backup. Okay. Uh, question about uh, retention policies and Office 365 backup. Uh, uh, for now, we don't have uh, any retention policies. We keep uh, data forever and without uh, any uh, any limits. But uh, uh, for now, we can uh, delete data uh, when the user users ask us to delete delete the data. But uh, actually. Uh, we have plans uh, uh, to release this feature with retention policies, and uh, it, uh, it's going to be implemented uh, within, a, uh, within a month. Within a month, this feature with retention policies. Thank you. All right, so we have just one minute left. Uh, what we want to do, we want to do the <laughs> final thing. It's about the license that I promised you at the beginning for those of you who joined later. Um, so there was a there was saying about the uh, about the uh, most active uh, participant and also uh, most interesting question. So we're gonna uh, give away to. Uh, free pro licenses to those two persons. Uh, so thanks very much. Uh, we have already decided uh, to whom those licenses will go. Uh, please uh, expect an email from our site within uh, next 10 minutes. And uh, again, so thanks very much for your time today. And uh, for those questions that are still unanswered, please uh, get your replies shortly. So we will do that shortly for you. So thank you very much and have a great week.